And so, without further ado, here it is. Make a note. Give it to Kathy, who may be the best at this. Since we're going to wish uh, people a happy Rosh Hashanah, which is my idea and a good idea, just don't forget to check when Ramadan is. We have to wish all of our Muslim friends happy Ramadan. Happy, 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 happy Ramadan. Osama bin Laden. 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 Happy Ramadan. Happy, 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 happy Ramadan. Long live Osama bin Laden. Long live Osama bin Laden. We have contributed to making a cult figure out of Osama bin Laden. See, Osama bin Laden, his stated goal, wants to destroy America. At least he said it to me. That's what I say to the American people. We've never seen this kind of evil before. They can't stand free. The evil doers, they can't stand free. T Taliban, they can't stand free. The fanatics, they can't stand free. They hate what America stands for. Freedom and democracy. Freedom and democracy. These beliefs are the foundation of our civilized world. And once they gain a foothold, they cannot be stopped. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. So I just think that report left the wrong impression. Welcome back to Terrorism Hits America. What now? It comes down to this. We're faced with an enemy who are determined to destroy us, and we have no hope of negotiating a peace. Unless that changes, we are justified in doing anything we can to survive. Now he had the war he wanted. I shall give a propagandist reason he can fight it. The victor is not asked if he told the truth. This is essentially the same uh, crowd that uh, brought you Desert Storm 10 years ago, particularly uh, Secretary Powell, Vice President Cheney, and of course, President Bush, the son of then President Bush. I know people in the administration who are dying to use military action. If you're gonna cock it, you throw it. Just uh, shoot something up uh, for a feel-good feeling. There's an old saying in the Pentagon, ready, fire, aim. <laughs> errant piece of ordinance <laughs> getting it a little mixed up but we cannot allow any other country to tell us what we can do it is action alone that counts above all though you know we're going to have to strengthen our own response we have air power we have naval power we want to be free to, to do what we want to do this is something we've got to do to defend the American people. The course of this conflict is not known. It will never be over. It will begin in Afghanistan, but it can't end in Afghanistan. Americans should not expect one battle. It's going to be a long, long, complicated, risky, difficult, long, complicated, messy, sexy, dirty job. Around the world. With an unspecified uh, outcome. Long, long struggle, a long fight. And the enemy is much more elusive, equally as formidable in the sense of being, I would use the word evil. 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 Evil doers. The battle of good against evil is always being waged. Our beliefs are the very opposite of those of the fanatics. This is a war of good versus evil. Islam and the West have always been at war. And we know that God is not neutral between them. So that seems to be a, a major uh, theme here. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Don't go to hell. Please, I beg you, don't go to hell. Uh, I've taken a lot of heat for saying it goes back to the Crusades. Barely a hundred years after Muhammad's death, the Islamic Empire had spread far and wide. The Pope reacted to the Muslim expansion by launching Christendom's version of Holy Wars, the Crusades. And you can just see it happening again. This kind of, quote, clash of civilizations. And this could be a defining moment. That the world needs to march forward to deal with the scourge of the bearded ones and see what they have done against mankind. Because it's only going to happen with all of us together. The 
message to Muslim nations and moderate Arabs, Pakistan also, uh, is... We hold our beliefs every bit as strongly as they hold theirs. And now is the time to show it. When we come back, sometimes the best offense is a strong defense. And a lot depends on strong American leadership. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. George Bush looks as if he may go into this as a boy and come out a man. I think he has a, a tremendous asset in this crisis, and that is his simplicity. Um, the, the American people... Um, Shazam! Uh, he feels more and more like the commander-in-chief. He was Jimmy Stewart tonight. Thank you. He is also bringing to bear the assets and the instruments of national power of a vast number of countries around the world. The president has the power to take action, even a force. To hunt down, to find, to smoke out of their holes. They hide in caves. We'll get them out. Musketeers, here's something we want you always to remember. Almost all religions preach that love is the supreme virtue, and a few spiritual teachers, perceiving that we are all gifted at loving what pleases us, teach that the highest, the most edifying forms, which might ultimately save the world, involve our regard for those it is difficult to love, some of whom are our enemies. Kennedy made a speech at American University in June of the year before he died. And he said, we live in one world, we got to breathe in the same air, and we got to live together, we're going to die together. What happened? There's a great deal of distrust of the United States around the world. They see a continuum of the Crusades in every action as the West gains more power. And their fear is that the United States is like a Goliath that can stride around uh, the earth uh, breaking things. They don't all trust our motives. We're also making life difficult around the world in a number of other countries. So as a consequence, recently we have not been doing very much real education, which is why there's so much cynicism, pessimism, apathy. When Thomas Aquinas appeared on the Meeting of Mind shows, one of the many fascinating things he said was that he had learned a great deal from his enemies, by which he meant his philosophical opponents. We don't seem to be able to learn anything from our philosophical opponents. And the danger is that many of us may start to equate Islam with the terrorists. The anger, hatred, and rage we are feeling in our hearts as Americans. Military might cannot reclaim what we have lost inside ourselves. Hopefully, we will come away with as few lives lost as we can. We have already lost way too many. For 200 odd years, this nation has counted on the military to defend itself. Uh, against these sorts of threats. Well, now the threats are here at home. What happened? 
I thought we lived in a safe playground of a world where my career was the only thing I had to think about. And suddenly, there's a larger, desperate, dangerous world. Explain it to me. What's it about? This isn't the world you promised me. This isn't the world you told me about. This isn't the world in which only private things count. And so it really comes down to a very basic choice that we have to make as a civilization. Either we will learn to bury the animosities of our ethnocentric militant traditions and come to understand that Earth's survival depends on our collective, unified participation. Or we will sustain this cycle of violence and revenge until humanity is returned to the status of primitivity and Earth reduced to the rubble of antiquity. It's really up to us. It really is up to us. Good night.